Hi, I'm Sean McCourt. And I'm Anthony Galdi. Welcome to another music edition of Behind the Emerald Curtain. Today we'll explore how a song goes from an idea in someone's head to a written piece of music. We'll meet the people who transpose, orchestrate, and arrange the unforgettable score of Wicked, bringing the music from the composer to the page, and finally, to the stage. Doing a musical uh, requires a whole team to deal with the music. Not just myself who writes the songs, but um, an orchestrator to translate them for the orchestra. Before it goes on stage, it wants a production value, just as all the other elements in the show do. And so the orchestrator adds to the original music by assigning instruments to the melody that Stephen has written on the piano. Songs that are more um, orchestral, uh, Bill just did, from basically from the piano parts. But in some cases, where there's a more pop drive, my conductor, Stephen Aremus, and um, one of the arrangers, Alex Lacamoire, did kind of pop arrangements of the songs. Stephen uh, always, always said that he, he never wanted it to, he always wanted it to be kind of this hybrid of, you know, many different elements to kind of create its own world. And so much of what we do uh, in the orchestration um, is, uh, you know, wed weds, you know, certain pop elements, certain kind of old time musical theater elements, certain orchestral symphonic elements, and kind of, and even operatic elements, and bring them all together uh, to create this very vivid musical world that we inhabit. Bill would do what we would call in the record business sweetening. He would build instruments around those pop that pop arrangement. I honestly don't know how it works. <laughs> I just know I, I love to do it. I feel all of us working together came up with a pretty unified um, approach to the score. It's a whole process that, that starts with, you know, once Stephen writes it, it then goes to the orchestrator who then, you know, blows it up for all of the other instruments and writes, hand writes on score paper all of the different parts that become this, you know, this big orchestration. And then it goes to a copyist. The people who actually do the grunt work, if I may use that word, and I don't mean it pejoratively, I mean it actually with great admiration. We actually prepare the physical music that's on the orchestra stand. We get that score and we have to extract out the parts for all the individual players in the orchestra. Is there enough time for the violin player to turn his page and still make the next passage? I mean, we have to know what all the instruments are capable of and make sure that the music is friendly to them. Lately I've been saying that one of the things that we do is we're like the accountants of sharps and flats. We dot every musical I and cross every musical T. We're taking the, the raw form of the music in a score that's been orchestrated. So it's finished, but no one has a part to play yet. And now we're using common practice, uh, performance practices, to put it onto paper in the way that's familiar to play, that reduces hands raised at a, at a rehearsal. We create a musical map to help the player get from the beginning of the piece to the end of the piece, at the same time as all the other players in the orchestra. There's a big team that it takes to put on a, a musical. It's not just one guy, you know, sort of scribbling out some tunes and saying, oh, why doesn't the flute play that? Oh, very clearly this was a collaboration that I had never experienced before. It was uh, promising, challenging, fascinating, engaging, not to say triumphant. 